So, as you can see by the heading, this kind of identity is what we call a compound angle identity. And the name makes sense, right? You're putting more angles inside here than just one. You've got multiple ones. This is a bit of a mouthful, but lucky for you, uh, unlike for me, you have this little thing called the reference sheet, which has these important results on it. I should point out though, just as with everything on the reference sheet, if you're going to the reference sheet to help you get this right, you are spending time doing that, and that also means you don't know it as well. I would suggest as you use this one, and this is the most basic one, um, you'll just start to work it into your head as we go through the exercises. Now, this is only one of them. There are actually six. There are, well, actually, there's, there's a lot, but there are six <laughs> basic ones. So, well, you already know a lot of them, right? So let me show you. And I will point out, by the way, the proof that I just supplied to you is one of hundreds of proofs. The textbook supplier is a slightly different one that uses um, quadrants and, uh, and, and cosine. Uh, I intentionally, as I've pointed out before, I intentionally try and give you different ones because that way, if you want, you can go back and read the one in the textbook, but this one's a little bit different. Now, you can use every one of the uh, compound angle identity formulas to get to all the rest of them because all of the trig functions are so closely linked. So here's an example. If I know what sine of alpha plus beta is, how can I use that to help me work out what sine alpha <coughs> minus beta is? Suggestion. Sign. Say that again. Work the sign. Okay. Obviously, this has to do with just the signs in here, but you have to be a little careful about how you flip the signs. I'm going to prove it for you, not just show you the result. So, this is a sum. This is a difference. I'm going to write the difference as a sum. Like, what do I have to add to alpha in order to make it alpha minus beta? And the answer is, if I add negative beta, th those are the same. Do you agree? The reason why this is useful is because now I can use everything in the top line, right? I'm just going to swap out all the betas for negative betas. Okay, so help me out. I'm going to write sine alpha cos what? Negative beta. Plus cos alpha sine negative beta. Okay, now I can use all that knowledge I gained from graphing earlier, a couple of weeks ago, to help me work out what to do with this thing. Okay, um, off on the side here. I want you to draw for me a couple of tiny graphs. Okay. Now, this is a bit unusual. Ordinarily, we would draw our graphs for trig functions <coughs> from 0 to 360 degrees. That's normal, isn't it? Okay. This is just going to be a small one on the side. I actually want us to draw it not from 0 to 360, but from negative 360 to 360. There's a point I want to make. Okay. So here's what cosine looks like. You just have to have a basic one. Don't even label anything on it. I just want the shape. And in addition to that, let's do sine and do that like so. So there it is, sine and cosine from negative 360 to 360. Okay, can you remember? If I slap a minus sign, like if this is cos x, we know what cos is like. <coughs> if I want to work out on the basis of that, what does cos of negative x look like? The minus sign is a flipping thing, it's a reflection, right? Which way am I reflecting? What variable is being affected? It's, it's the x, right? Like, see, here's y over here. y has not been touched, okay? So if only the x and you're flipping, which way is that flipping me? X's are about the x-axis, is about horizontal values, isn't it? So the difference between this and this is that you take this and you flip it around horizontally. Okay. Now have a look at this thing. Have a look. What happens when you take this shape, like this, and then you flip it around horizontally? What's the result? There's no change because it's symmetrical around the y-axis. Do you notice that? So in fact, these two things are equal to each other. Cos of negative x equals cos x. So I can actually write down here sine alpha. I can just write that as cos beta. And you can go ahead, you can check on your calculator, right? Cos of 30 is root 3 on 2. Cos of negative 30, your calculator will still tell you, is root 3 on 2. Okay, have a look at sine. This is a little more thought. Again, I'm going to take this, and like you suggested, I'm going to grab it, and I'm going to reflect it horizontally. Okay? This time I do get something different. I want you to put it in on the graph. Uh, look, I'm going to go, I'm going to draw it. I always draw my things from left to right. That's normal. 
So I'm going to draw it from right to left to do that reflection. Okay. So the red one, that's sine of <laughs> negative x. And the blue one is just regular sine x. Let's <laughs> draw Now, I flipped it horizontally. But that's not all I've done. Do you notice there's another thing I could do to turn the blue graph into the red graph? What's another way that I could get from blue to red without doing it this way? What else could I do? You can move it like that. Is that it? Okay, so I could shift it, right? Instead of going like that, I could take it and then just move it over a little bit, right? I could do a phase shift. There's another thing I could do. These, because they're periodic, you can do all kinds of things. I could take it like this, right? And I could flip it vertically. Do you agree? Like, see how there's this um, turning point here? And it sort of flops up to the bottom side here. Uh, and this one from the bottom goes up to the top. Does that make sense? <coughs> so in fact, this horizontal flip for this function ends up the same as a vertical flip, right? How would I write it? How would I write it if I wanted to take this guy, which is um, y equals, and vertically flip it? Um. Wait, as in how would you show that sine minus x is the same to minus sine of x? Yeah, what would I actually write? I would do the, I would slap the negative sign on the y, because that's vertical, isn't it? So minus y equals sine x, which of course I can write the negative on the other side if I want. y equals minus sine x. You've seen this before. We were graphing this a couple weeks ago, right? So now come back to our identity over here. This sine of negative beta. I'm going to rewrite it as negative sine beta, okay? By virtue of this transformation piece. So in this case, doing it that way ends up being the same as doing it that way. All right, I'm almost finished. This guy out the front, I've already dealt with. That negative sign, I'm going to bring it out the front of that term and make it minus. Do you see what I've done? So the tree identity for sine alpha plus beta looks like that. The tree identity for sine alpha minus beta only differs in one way. What is it? Conveniently, it's just this minus sign right here. Do you see that? So see how this plus <coughs> parallels to a plus? Or this minus parallels to a minus. And everything else is the same. And you get triple 